Hello and welcome to the NPTEL uh, MOOCs course on Economics of Health and Education. In uh, continuation of uh, databases that we are studying in module 8 of this course, in this lesson we will focus on uh, some official statistics on education in India and we will focus on uh, school education and higher education. Now, in the last uh, decade, there has been a lot of uh, changes with regard to the way we collect data uh, in uh, official uh, data uh, from uh, various levels of uh, governance. And accordingly, there have been a lot of changes in the uh, sector of education as well. And it has become a lot more easier for researchers to work on some of these databases because they are available in user friendly forms. And uh, as a part of this course on economics of health and education, one of the focus area is also to introduce the learners to uh, official statistics in this area. Uh, therefore, in this lesson, I am making an attempt to uh, provide some exposure to the learners, whether you are at the undergraduate level or at the postgraduate level, to be able to uh, look at some of the data, understand what kind of data is available uh, or official statistics data is available on school education and higher education in India. Now, in the last few classes uh, with respect to education, uh, we have studied the probe reports in detail. We have also studied the ASSER reports in detail and I would like to uh, emphasize upon the distinction between uh, those reports which relied on different kinds of surveys carried out at uh, different uh, uh, levels, particularly at the household level. Uh, and I would like to distinguish uh, those surveys from the uh, reports that emerge from the official statistics. Now, uh, you will recall that when we studied probe and ASSER reports, we referred to citizen centric surveys. Those were independent household surveys carried out by NGOs or civil society organizations or uh, non-governmental uh, research based organizations such as the National Council for Applied Economic Research and so on and also individual researchers. But some of these reports have received a lot of uh, significance over a period of time as a result of which they are widely cited in the research on uh, education. But today we are talking about uh, two important sources of official data and uh, these are official data because they are collected by government agencies. They have a nod from the Ministry of Education, Department of Higher Education for collection of this data and uh, this data is provided at the all India level and it is a massive exercise which follows detailed uh, methodological uh, scrutiny as far as collection of data is concerned. So, in this class, we will study about two data sources. One is the UDICE plus data and the second is the All India Survey of Higher Education. UDICE plus data uh, provides us data on school education in India and the IISHE or the All India Survey of Higher Education provides us uh, data on higher education in India. Now, apart from these two sources, there are other official data sources as well. For example, the National uh, Statistical Office or the National Sample Survey Organization also provides us uh, some data on education in India in its various rounds of surveys where the focus is on social consumption or education is one of the aspects of social consumption data that the NSSO provides. We also have various state level sources which provides us official data on education in India. However, these are two important sources which have recently uh, provided us a more comprehensive coverage of what we can find with regard to schools and higher education and technical institutions in India. So, let us begin with a small introduction about UDICE. Now, in India, arguably there are about more than 14 lakh schools and of these schools about 69% uh, are run by the government, uh, about 23% are run by private entities, about uh, more than 5% of schools are government aided and uh, a little more than 3% of schools belong in other categories. Now, of these 80% are elementary schools, 10% are secondary schools and 9% are about higher secondary schools. Now, these estimates would give you a sense of the uh, scale of data collection that is required uh, to provide us reliable statistics on uh, the progress in schooling in India. So, in order to have accurate statistics on school education, there is clearly a need for a comprehensive system for capturing data which is frequently updated and is verifiable down to the local level and individual schools. 
given the vastness of Indian landscape, we do realize that there are uh, state level uh, hassles, there are district level hassles, there are various uh, local level uh, issues with regard to collection of data from various schools. So, as part of this exercise on looking at uh, the robustness of these data, let us also try to interrogate some of these issues. Now, what is UDICE plus? It is Unified District Information System for Education plus. We will presently see what the plus in UDICE plus uh, entails. Now, the UDICE uh, fulfills the role as a singular unified source for all school education statistics in India. Now, if you look at the history of school education statistics in India, in 1995, we have seen that uh, the district primary education program or the DPEP was piloted in 42 districts. We studied this when we uh, looked at the evolution of education policy in India and uh, these uh, pilots took place over seven states and one of the important uh, areas that the pilots worked on was creating an education management information system which had become very important. So, as part of this exercise, the district information system for education was created for classes 1 to 5. Uh, the lower primary classes to capture school level data. Uh, because remember that during this period, increasing enrollments in schools was an important international mandate as well as an important policy focus as far as India is concerned. Now, in 2008-9, the Rashtriya Madhyamik Siksha Abhiyan was launched, uh, the focus on secondary education from classes 9 to 12 because by this time enrollments in primary schooling had gone up in India as had elsewhere in the developing countries of the world. And for secondary education as well, a similar management information system was created which was called the Secondary Education Management Information System or SEMIS. It was created to capture school level data for secondary education. In 2012-13, they were merged which was referred to as now the Unified District Information System for Education. It was merged by put bringing together DICE for elementary education and SEMIS for uh, secondary education. So, this is the plus in the UDICE data. So, now we have uh, comprehensive data in one place on elementary education as well as secondary education in India. So, since then UDICE became the uh, sole source of official statistics on school education system in India uh, for the ministry and all other sources of statistics such as annual data collection were uh, uh, discontinued by school elementary education departments. UDI's data was processed and hosted in a private server at the National Institute for Education Planning and Administration in New Delhi. And since 2017-18, UDICE has been revamped into UDICE Plus because of systemic issues in data collection, authenticity and verifiability with UDICE statistics. So, this UDICE Plus is now processed and hosted centrally by the National Informatics Center. Now, let us focus a little on uh, what is the uh, data format of uh, the UDICE Plus uh, database. Uh, data in UDICE Plus is captured from every single school in India with a form called the data capture format. Uh, and this form contains all relevant information about the school which includes information about students disaggregated by age, social category, uh, the uh, grade in which they are enrolled in, teachers, information about right to education entitlements, number of instructional days in school and so on. And after all this information has been captured in the data capture format, after due processing, there is verification and correction of errors. The UDICE plus system then generates what is referred to as school report cards. And these school report cards have become an important source of information for researchers working in the area of progresses in school education. And these school report cards are generated for each school in India, which contains all the information submitted in the uh, data capture format or the uh, forms, the DCF forms. Now, what is the uh, uh, significance of these SRCs or the school report cards? The school report cards are basically meant to increase transparency and accountability of the school to the local community. So, these data are available free of cost to the public at large, not just researchers, uh, an informed individual of or citizen uh, of the country who wants to look at uh, the progresses in school education in India or who wants to look up what has uh, 
happened with regard to um, school education in a certain district or a certain block in India uh, with regard to attendance rates or any other indicator, they can actually look up this data. So, the school report cards um, has an element of transparency and accountability of the schools to the local community as well as it helps in school level, village level and district level planning for school development. Now, these uh, DCFs are an important uh, instrument in the uh, progress of uh, UDICE uh, database. The DCFs or the data capture formats, they capture a huge amount of data for every school from basic school profile information to physical infrastructure of the schools to teachers, staff and students to school management committees, the trainings received by the school members and so on. And these DCFs are very comprehensive, they are long, they can be as long as 40 pages and therefore filling them up and uploading them can be a tedious task because UDICE provides us, uh, these are uh, web based uh, information collection because, because of which we are talking about management information system. So, there is a lot of information which is co being collected through the online process and this entire uh, process has been uh, automated so as to ensure that information is received on uh, time. However, there are a lot of checks and balances within the system that uh, gives rise to robustness but also raises concerns. So, what happens is that these uh, data capture formats, the empty DCF forms are printed and transported from district level to block level, from then the block level to cluster level and then handed up to the headmasters of different schools to be uh, filled up. Now, the school headmaster or any staff member in lieu of the uh, headmaster can fill up the data capture formats and then they submit it back to the cluster level either to the cluster resource center coordinator or the headmaster of a nodal school appointed by the cluster level. So, you can see that there are various forms of organizational activities uh, that have been designed to ensure that the data is captured at the right time and then it gets back into the portals at the right time. So, therefore, at the uh, block level, various uh, uh, levels of um, resource persons have been created who can ensure the smooth uh, transfer of data from the schools to the uh, state MIS or the uh, national level uh, portals. So, uh, below the block level, we have these cluster resource center coordinators and these cluster resource center coordinators they forward the filled out uh, the forms to the appropriate officer at the block level. So, there are block resource coordinators or block education officers. In some places, there are block MIS officers because education is also uh, the concurrent list. So, which is why there are a lot of, uh, there is a lot of uh, coordination that takes place uh, at the governance, uh, uh, in the governance aspect as far as uh, state level and district level and uh, national level functionaries are concerned. So, depending upon the state and the state policies, there may be different kinds of coordinators at the block level. And these uh, cluster resource center coordinators, they must carry out 100 percent verification of the data before handing the uh, formats to the block level. Between this level of collecting information from the uh, schools to the uh, block level, there is a lot of uh, work that gets carried out with regard to verification of data. So, therefore, uh, much of the work is decentralized uh, at the block level or below the block level to ensure that we have consistent data and reliable data. So, there is a lot of accountability on people who are involved in collection of school level data at the block level or uh, between the block level and the schools. Now, these uh, block education officers or uh, resource coordinators or MIS officers, they have to then upload the received information uh, from the DCF forms into the UDICE plus software. Uh, some schools which have internet connectivity, they upload the DCFs to the UDICE plus software by themselves, but this has also to be monitored by the at the block level. So, block level officials usually authenticate the DCF data by field visits to at least 30 percent of the schools within their jurisdiction. Now, that is a humongous task because much of the information that we get on schools 
uh, state level information or district level information uh, really depends upon how the coordination at the block level is taking place and what is the uh, strictness with which block level data verification and scrutinization uh, then takes place. Now, after the block level information comes to the district level, the district education officer or a district program officer as the case may be, they take responsibility for training of all headmasters in filling up the physical uh, district capture formats with the help of the BRCs and the CRCCs who are the block resource coordinators or the cluster resource coordinators. And then the district level data from UDICE plus software is collated for making a district level report card as well. So, we do not just have school level report card because we have uh, information on all schools, then we can also have district level report cards which are similar to the state level report cards which are then published at the state level and also uh, provided to the national level portals. And here in order to ensure reliability of data, 10 percent of the schools in the district are sample checked through uh, field visits. Now, one of the important characteristic features of official statistics is the uh, checks and balances within the system with regard to methodological details and uh, checking of data. Uh, so, uh, this is something that needs to be borne in mind when we say uh, what is the importance of official statistics in databases. Uh, this is uh, one of the important uh, uh, characteristics or aspects uh, that uh, the amount of scrutiny that goes into this data collection uh, makes the government accountable with regard to the uh, estimates that we come up with based upon this data. Now, there is a lot of activity taking place at the state level as well. So, there is a state level team for UDICE plus, uh, the state MIS unit is often the state office for uh, Samagra Siksha Abhiyan, which is basically the information that is getting collected for uh, elementary and secondary schools in India. The state MIS unit collects all the data received from the UDICE plus software for their state and then they prepare a state level report card, which contains all pertinent state level indicators for school education. Now, this data is then shared with the national uh, management information system unit, which is housed at the Ministry of Education. And the state team is also responsible for initiating proper time schedule for all activities related to UDICE plus. The state MIS unit also travels to all districts to aid the process of data collection and updation and also sample check at least 5 to 10 percent of all schools to authenticate the data. So, at the block level 100 percent of data is authenticated, at the district level 10 percent of the data is authenticated and the state level 5 to 10 percent of all schools data are authenticated. Now, this is to give you a snapshot view of the UDICE plus uh, data collection, collation and the verification process. So, uh, let us begin uh, with uh, this box here, which uh, shows the district education officer, district project coordinator, district MIS coordinators. So, at the district level, these district capture formats, they are physical copies. So, they are transferred to the uh, block level and there are of course, timelines within which these uh, DCA formats have to reach the block level. So, at the block level here, the education officers or block resource coordinators, uh, they have to upload these physical DCFs onto the UDICE plus software. And they also have to monitor the uploading of DCFs by schools with internet connectivity. So, those schools which have internet connectivity, they have to fill in this data online and update it in the UDICE plus software. And those who do not have internet connectivity have to physically fill up these forms and then it must again come back to the uh, block office and the district office. And this data is authenticated by field visits to 30 percent of schools. Now, the BRCs or the education officers, they give out these forms to the cluster resource coordinators uh, who hand out uh, these uh, formats to the schools and uh, these they are then given to the headmaster of the concerned school by the CRCs. And it is to be ensured that the CRCs are carrying out 100 percent verification of the data before handing the DCF to block level back after filling up by the headmasters. So, the CRCs then give out the forms to the headmasters. So, 
So as I said, in those schools which have internet connectivity, headmasters upload the UDICE plus data directly or they may uh, fill out the DCF forms and give out to the CRC coordinator, the cluster resource coordinator who then verifies, 100 percent verification takes place and it is then uploaded into the UDICE plus software by the block education officers or the block office which is responsible for uh, UDICE related data. So, then once this entire, so this is where the bulk of the activity takes place uh, between the block level, district level to the uh, school level where a lot of this information has to be 100 percent verified and uh, it is to be ensured that the data are reliable uh, and therefore, each of these uh, functionaries who are at the block level or the cluster level are made accountable to the process of data uh, accuracy. So, once this information then comes to the district level, uh, the district level also ensures a sample check of about 10 percent of the schools uh, under them through field visits. They then collect uh, the district level data for district report cards and then the district report cards and the district data uh, goes to the state teams. The state Samagra Shiksha team also carry out a list of activities, elaborate activities. Uh, they uh, travel to all districts to aid the process of data collection and updation. The state secretariat will sample check 5 to 10 percent of the schools to authenticate data and then they collect state level data for state report card. So, any delay at the level of the schools immediately impacts the uh, publication of the uh, district report cards or the state report cards. The state then shares the data with the National Samagra Shiksha Abhiyan office at the Ministry of Education. So, this is to show you that there is a, a rigorous and elaborate process of data collection from all schools in India and the block level officers and the district level officers are made accountable to the process of uh, training of uh, people who are associated with the data collection process, uh, reaching the district capture formats which provides elaborate data on the schools. There is a lot of scrutiny of the data that is provided by the school headmasters uh, to the block level or the district level officers and then all of these exercise together helps us with the creation of school level report cards or school report cards and then we have national level uh, reports on progress in school education in India. So, let us now focus a little on the school report cards uh, that are brought forth by the UDICE plus. So, the school report cards are prepared every year for every school in India including unrecognized private schools. Data that is covered in school report cards is almost nearly exhaustive. Uh, special attention is given to data regarding entitlements and standards under the Right to Education Act of 2009 such as the number of classrooms, uh, constitution of school management committees, the trainings received by them, enrollment of students from socially disadvantaged groups uh, for private schools, uh, the distribution of free textbooks, uniforms, etc. The data about students is also disaggregated by grade, uh, the age, social category, religion, etc. so as to monitor issues with equity on a large scale as well as ensuring timely enrollment of students at the grade appropriate level for their age. Recently in India there have been many revisions and reforms with regard to admission of uh, age appropriate students in each classroom and uh, these are uh, some of the ways. Uh, collection of data, uh, official statistics on school education is one of the ways in which uh, these kinds of policy reforms are implemented in India. So, this is an example of a school report card uh, for a school in uh, uh, Bajali district of Assam. So, there is a UDI code given uh, to the uh, school uh, report card. So, it is this code which uh, there is a state code, there are district code, block codes that helps us to distinguish between different uh, school report cards. Uh, there are uh, details about the village that is available, there are details about the school category, whether it is a primary school or secondary school, whether it is a co-educational school, what is the lowest and highest classes, whether it has pre-primary schools or not. Remember that uh, this uh, when we are talking about uh, school education in India, there is also a policy framework with regard to early childhood education. 
so which includes uh, children below lower primary classes who are age 3 and 4. So, this is also one of the ways to uh, check and implement the progress of early childhood education in India. Medium of instruction is noted down whether uh, the school has been visited by academic inspections, uh, cluster coordinators, block level officers, state and district level officers, how many visits have been made, those information is also collected. The other details with regard to the year of establishment, what is the building status of the school, whether it is government owned or on rent or privately owned, whether there are boundary walls, uh, is there, uh, is this a special school, uh, what is the availability of ramps and handrails for uh, ensuring that they are disability friendly or not. Uh, there are also information on whether Anganwadi uh, centers are available within the premises of these schools, how many boys and girls are admitted in Anganwadi centers, whether there is an Anganwadi worker or not, whether the school is residential type or it is a minority school, whether it is approachable by all weather road. There are information about toilets and hand washing areas, whether hand washing facility is available for midday meal schemes or not, what is the condition of classrooms, whether they need minor or major repairs, whether library is available or not, whether a separate room for headmaster is available or not, uh, whether drinking water is available or not, if drinking water is available, whether it is functional or not. Uh, rainwater harvesting, playground is available or not, furniture, electricity, whether there is solar panel and also uh, whether medical checkups for children are carried out regularly in schools or not. There are more information about digital facilities, uh, whether they are functional or not, internet, laptop, projectors, desktop, digi boards, when we are talking about digitization of school education to see how many schools actually have access to these kinds of uh, digital facilities. Uh, the number of uh, incentives received by students, for example, free textbooks, transport facilities, free uniforms, information about school management committee, instructional days for primary classes, average school hours studied, average teaching hours. Remember that in the probe report, one of the important finding was uh, teacher absence in uh, schools in India. So, the experience of those independent reports, citizens report on schooling also fed into the kind of information that is being collected by uh, these kinds of software such as UDICE plus. And then there are uh, age specific, class specific enrollments data. Uh, whether or not right to education act is being implemented or not, economically weaker sections are enrolled in not, uh, the number of classes taught, uh, the number of appointments regular part time and contractual teachers, teachers with professional qualification information is also collected. The enrollment data looks something like this, you have enrollment by social category, minority details, so grade wise pre primary boys and girls class 1 boys and girls and so on till class 11, 12 depending upon the kind of school whether it is a primary school or a secondary school or a higher secondary education school information is collected till the higher secondary level uh, class 12. Uh, similarly, enrollment by grade in the current academic section by age in completed years information is also available. So, these snapshots of the uh, school report cards would give you a sense of what is the uh, extent of information being collected from each and every school in India. So, it is a mammoth exercise which is coordinated at different levels uh, from the national level to state level, district level, block level, cluster level and the school level. So, uh, when collecting all of these information of course, there are pros and cons of the process, but uh, if we have to look at the progress of official statistics in India, I think this is uh, one of the important progresses that needs to be celebrated with regard to uh, the kind of information that we have currently on our fingertips to be able to carry out detailed analysis at the uh, school level or block level at any level of governance you want to carry out school level uh, schooling progresses, it is possible to uh, look up these data. Now, given the scale or the extensive collection of uh, data uh, collection process, of course, there are some issues with the UDICE plus data uh, and uh, these are persistent issues and it is uh, important to highlight some of these issues as well. 
because of the amount of uh, scrutiny or verification that has to take place at each level, it takes well over a year between uh, schools submitting their district capture formats and their school report cards being available online for viewing. So, there is a lot of data lag and this is one of the reasons uh, that uh, because of the extensive data collection uh, processes, official statistics often come with a lag. But it is important to work on official statistics because of uh, the robustness of the methodology that is being followed uh, for collection of information. So, as I said, there is a lag in school report cards being created primarily because it has multiple levels of collation and authentication which takes time especially in larger states. UDI's place plus software therefore has been known to be laggy at many times with incidents of data loss as well. Uh, data entry operators at the block and district level are contractual employees in many states and there are frequent designation changes, there are um, problems in training received by them and this also affects the quality of data. Now, there is a top down mode of training with state level officials training uh, district level officials and then district level officials training block and cluster levels. So, the rigor of training tends to decrease at the lower levels. As many schools fill physical uh, formats and the DCFs are then uploaded at the block level, it is expected that there may be compromises in data quality at that level. Uh, similarly, there are uh, stakeholders who are under pressure to complete and upload these uh, data formats on time. So, uh, headmasters, cluster coordinators and block coordinators uh, might uh, take shortcuts to get over the tasks uh, quicker, especially when it comes to uh, data that is not easily verifiable such as number of days where schools were open or age based disaggregation in class enrollment, social category wise breakdown in class enrollment and so on. The block level coordinators are also supposed to authenticate the data by sample check of 25 to 30 percent of the school's field visits and similarly district level uh, coordinators are also supposed to sample check. Uh, including the state offices who are supposed to sample check about 5 to 10 percent. Now, these numbers can be highly impractical um, because of the timelines that needs to be met uh, for uh, the publication of district and school level report cards. So, these uh, guidelines may also be highly impractical and end up compromising the verification uh, process. Now, for those of you who are interested to work on the UDICE Plus data just to uh, ensure that you can make a beginning, you can visit the UDICE Plus portal which can be accessed through this link and then you register. If you are a new user, you may need to register on the portal and then you navigate to the data section where data is available for download. This is usually found under the reports or data tab and then you select your desired data. You can select the specific data sets you are interested in such as school wise data or state level aggregates, district level information, whichever level you want to work on, you can select the data and the portal usually allows filtering by year, state, district or other relevant categories. Then you download the data in various formats in excel formats or pdf formats and then you can use various tools, statistical tools for analyzing the data or generating custom reports. And you can also explore the various options available to see if they meet your research uh, needs. So, as far as the uh, school education statistics is concerned, the most comprehensive database that is available to researchers today is the UDICE Plus data. Uh, as you have seen, it provides extensive information at the school level uh, and uh, for each school the data is available. So, the researchers can then choose to work at the level that you uh, uh, at the block level or the state level or the district level that you want to work on. So, now let us move on to the uh, All India Survey on Higher Education. So, while for uh, school education, elementary, secondary and higher secondary education we have UDICE plus uh, the official statistics for higher education that is all education above 12th class including uh, education in social sciences and arts and humanities and technical education is available from the All India Survey of Higher Education. So, this is an annual web based survey and it is conducted by the Department of Higher Education since 2010-11. We have data on higher education uh, available in India right from the 1980s onwards. We have data from 1980-81 uh, till 2009-10 in physical report formats. 
but uh, because of the enormity of the data that is available with regard to higher education, the different kinds of higher education institutions that have come up today, uh, private sector institutions, uh, public private sector institutions, various other kinds of institutions at the state level. So, today we have a web based survey uh, which provides us comprehensive information about um, higher education institutions and this is available from the period 2010-11 onwards. It is conducted generally at the end of an academic year in June and it is the main source of comprehensive statistics on higher education in our country. It is uh, like the UDIS plus, this is also a mammoth exercise which covers all recognized higher education institutions in the country and therefore it provides a holistic picture of higher education. All categories almost of higher education institutions are covered, university and university level institutions, colleges and standalone institutions. Uh, so, university and university level institutions are those which are empowered to award degrees under some act of parliament or state legislature. Then there are colleges that are not empowered to provide degrees in their name, they are affiliated, recognized with some universities. And then there are standalone institutions that are not affiliated with universities and are uh, not empowered to provide degrees and therefore run diploma level programs. And this information is also available at the state level and the district level. So, a lot of information at various levels of governance helps us to uh, carry out research in progress on higher education in India as well. So, as far as education statistics is concerned with regard to progresses in uh, different levels of education, today we have a lot of data to work on uh, as researchers in uh, this field. Now, what are the different parameters on which the All India Survey of Higher Education provides us data? First is we have institutional data. So, it provides us basic details about institutions. If it is a technology institution, uh, then they mention so. If uh, these are non-technical institutions, then it is mentioned so. Uh, faculty details, whether they are contractual position, what is the uh, level of faculty, there are assistant professors, associate professors, uh, professors and so on, what is the infrastructure of the uh, institution, what are the different kinds of infrastructure available, those data are available. Uh, student enrollments data of course is available uh, for undergraduates, postgraduates, PhDs, diplomas. So, this is the data source from where we calculate about the progress of higher education, what proportion of youth is enrolled in higher education institutions. There is gender wise, social category wise uh, distinctions as well. Faculty and staff information with regard to details of teaching and non-teaching staff, their qualifications, designations, gender based distribution of faculty is also available in the uh, All India Survey on Higher Education reports. Data on examinations and results, past percentages across different levels of education, information on financial resources including funding from government and non-government sources, expenditure on various heads. There is also information on scholarships and loans. So, if as a researcher you want to focus only on the amount of scholarships and loans that are available to students in higher education today, that could be an important area of research and the information about this is also available in the IISHE. Now, what was the need for IISHE? There were many limitations in higher education statistics in India before 2010-11. As I mentioned that the data was collected in physical formats, but because of the mushrooming of various kinds of institutions in India at the higher education level, it uh, became uh, difficult to collect all of these information uh, physically and therefore, uh, the, uh, there was a felt need for a web based survey and so since 2010-11, uh, this uh, survey was initiated. So, it helped to gather reliable and comprehensive data on various aspects of uh, higher education, identify and capture all the institutions of higher learning in the country, what are the different kinds of institutions that have opened up. It of course, helps the policy makers to decide on resource allocation, uh, monitoring and evaluation uh, frameworks, uh, the trend analysis with regard to the growth of higher education institutions, uh, whether for example, there is a growth of medical education in this country or not, engineering education, the arts and humanities, uh, how have they grown. Uh, apparently, it is the arts and humanities that have grown rapidly in the country and it also helps in informed policy making. Now, what is the process of IC data collection? It is collected through an online portal maintained by the Department of Higher Education 
and the portal provides an interface for institutions to submit the required data online. Uh, there are unique identification numbers for each institution and registration of HEIs is also done on the IC portal. And uh, collected data is then again verified and validated by the uh, higher education department through cross checking and scrutiny. Uh, it is then compiled and analyzed through uh, various statistical reports. Uh, the data collection process is designed to be comprehensive and standardized and the uh, report is based on the voluntary uploading of data by institutions in higher education institutions. Now, one of the important uh, uh, distinctions between the citizen centric reports and the official statistics as you can see is that the self reporting by institutions. In the case of the citizen centric reports, we saw that there were household level information that was collected. Uh, by independent investigators, trained investigators. Now, there are household level information on education available from the NSSO in India as well. Uh, the sample survey uh, carried out by the IHDS for example also provides us information on education, but these are uh, institution based data that is collected uh, by the UDICE plus or the IC. So, these are uh, the information that are provided by the educational institutions. You could say that the data available from the supply side uh, of uh, supply of education. So, these are institution based data and therefore, uh, the responsibility for accuracy of the data rests with nodal officers of the concerned institution. Now, because of some of these aspects that they are self reported data from the institutions, uh, they give rise to some limitations of these IC data. Uh, because they do not capture the quality of education provided by the institutions and it does not cover institutions that are not recognized by UGC or other uh, regulatory bodies. Now, before 2010-11, uh, the data on higher education uh, was available from uh, two sources, selected education statistics for the period between 1980-81 and 2006-7 and the statistics of higher and technical education between 2007-8 to 9-10. Uh, many of these reports are available online for use. So, anyone who wants to look at uh, comparability of uh, progresses in higher education in India over the period of last 40 years can make use of uh, this data. Some of the data may not be strictly comparable, but at least you can look at uh, the uh, growth of higher education institutions in different time periods and how far we have progressed in higher education. So, uh, for accessing the data you can visit the official website of the All India Survey of Higher Education to explore the data available uh, because the portal offers various reports, data sets and publications. Uh, you can look up the report section which provides uh, annual reports summarizing the survey results. So, you can look up the annual reports to simply see uh, what is the absorption of uh, contractual workers in uh, different educational institutions of the country. Uh, you can also look up this uh, data for the number of professors uh, or associate professors distributed by gender in different uh, educational institutions of the country. These are the kinds of uh, uh, statistical analysis that can be carried out to give us the uh, a sense of how uh, distribution of workforce has taken place uh, let us say in the education uh, sector of the country. There are of course, data downloads and dashboards in excel formats, there are interactive visualizations and summaries of the data also which you can use for uh, reports. Data is downloadable, uh, you can also access historical data if you are interested in uh, trends over uh, time and once downloaded you can use various softwares to carry out your analysis on the data. Documentation can also be carried out based upon the metadata. You can also request specific data uh, from the IC team uh, by putting up a request for, uh, for uh, downloading and then you also have to follow the data usage guidelines for citing the IC data uh, properly. So, uh, in today's class uh, we have looked up the official statistics on uh, school education and higher education in India. It is important that as learners of economics of health and education we get introduced to some of these databases because these databases help us to carry out various kinds of analysis at various levels of uh, governance and it can help us with uh, 
uh, various kinds of uh, uh, efficiency analysis uh, with regard to whether resources are being used efficiently or not. We can relate uh, these uh, institution level indicators with outcome indicators that various other surveys are uh, giving out and therefore it is important as learners for us to uh, also focus on official statistics because it gives us an overall sense of uh, how far we have progressed. Now often official statistics, there may be overestimations and underestimations, but as long as we are comparing it with uh, different years for which the data is available, they are consistent and it can be uh, used for carrying out meaningful interpretations and conclusions. Now at the same time there are, uh, they have to be supplemented with various independent surveys that are carried out by well established organizations or independent scholars and that all of these taken together can help us understanding how far we have progressed in meeting the sustainable development goals say on education and health in India. So, for this class I have used uh, the following references, I have visited the uh, official website of the All India Survey of Higher Education, the link is provided. The UDICE uh, website has also been visited, uh, we have looked up a few school report cards. Uh, I would also encourage the learner to look up uh, EPWRF, the Economic and Political Weekly Research Foundation which is an important uh, source which puts together uh, various data. And if your institution has access to uh, the, uh, the EPWRF, you can actually download the data. There are various kinds of interactive designs uh, that can help you use the data as well. So with this, uh, let us end this class on uh, official statistics in education in India. I will see you in the next class. Thank you. Thank you.